Hi guys, welcome to G0KSC and the Ham Radio Guy channel. It's been a while and uh, um, apologies for that. It's been such a, a hectic year so far. Um, so much so with uh, work and um, various different projects around the home and of course COVID. It's made it very difficult to get some time aside to be able to produce some new material for you. Uh, that and also that we was hoping to get an interview with Martin Dew of MFJ uh, in the January time frame towards the end of the month but that just hasn't happened he's had uh, a lot of things on his side work wise and COVID wise uh, and it's been the same here and just being able to get together that's been a, a very difficult task indeed we're hoping that that's going to happen on Friday if not over the weekend and then I'll be able to get something together for you next week um, what else is on the on the plan? Uh, NEC5, now the uh, uh, numeric electromagnetic code, uh, which is version five, which was developed by the late now Jerry Burke. Um, that's uh, that's been produced, and Lawrence Livermore partnership. I will put the link in uh, the description down below, so you can go and have a look at that. Uh, I'm now selling that, and if you're using it for personal use, it's around 110 dollars. And it does have a GUI or a graphical user interface now. So you can, without the need of a third party piece of software, you can use that yourself. Now, I did have a, a quick conversation with um, Ari, who uh, develops for NEC2. And he says he has no plans right now to incorporate NEC5. There are so many different changes uh, uh, to the code that it's going to be. Uh, a, a fairly comprehensive rewrite to get it to be adopted within 4NEC2. There's some very basic uh, viewing capabilities in there, but but not much that's going to give you uh, the, the the real benefits of the code. One of the main changes within NEC5 is that now there are going to be an even number of segments rather than odd. So there are going to be some very different uh, results that were seen. So what would happen is if you had let's say a, uh, a dipole you would need to have an odd number of segments in there say 13 segments and then your feed point would go in the middle of the middle segment whereas now um, it goes at the beginning of one of the segments <clears throat> or at the end of one of the segments so you have a, um, um, a, a, a what do you call it not a um, an odd but an even number sorry so that's uh, that's one of the main changes there. I'm going to do some comparisons on that as well, but I really need to have um, a common software where I can switch backwards and forwards between them. And it seems as if there is work on the way at the moment with Easy NEC uh, and um, uh, Roy Llewellyn to get a new version, maybe Easy NEC 7, that's going to incorporate NEC 5. And as I said, whereas you had with the NEC 4 engine, for personal use that was around five hundred dollars just for the four uh, the NEC four code. The NEC five code is one hundred and ten for personal use, so it's going to be a much more uh, effective means of being able to uh, get use of the the latest version of that code, and that that excludes any license costs that there would be for um, uh, Easy NEC as an example. So if you had the pro version, which was say five or six hundred dollars or thereabouts, you would have the uh, NEC 5 cost on top of that. Uh, so what else has been happening here? Um, I'm going to get some more of these interviews set up. I've got some real uh, interesting folk to, to get on here with you and I'm hoping to be able to extend the outside of antennas as well but before we get out uh, of the antenna uh, realms as far as uh, ham radio interviews are concerned we've got quite a number that we're going to be able to, uh, to cover off uh, with you. I don't want to shout about those too much right now um, I'm, I'll once the interviews are recorded I'll give you a heads up on who it is and, and what we're going to be discussing uh, just before we go live uh, just to give you a taster on that um, as far as development wise and what's been happening I think the biggest uh, thing for me to hit the radio world in more recent times is the release of the FTDX 10 um, I think that's more so for the seasoned uh, DX or and radio ham than it would be for for the newbie, because a lot of the guys uh, they come into the, the the hobby and they see these one radio fits all shack in a box type thing and and don't really appreciate um, the differences between 
uh, a jack of all trades and master of none and something that has an absolutely fantastic receiver on it uh, and i'm one you know with the uh, liking to have very low noise antennas and decent antenna systems i want to have the best that i can on the end of that as well so for many many years i was enjoying the delights of the flex 6700 which was a fantastic um, radio and right at the top of the sherwood engineering receiver performance list if you haven't been there uh, and you haven't uh, seen Rob Sherwood's work, I'll put a link below again so you can go and have a look at the, the site. But it's an, inter, uh, an independent view of all of the uh, most common radio transceivers that there are for ham radio use. Um, and he recalls all sorts of different data and then lists them in order of the performance um, for dynamic range selectivity and so on. And the, the 6700 has been, as I said, at the top of that list for many years. And it wasn't until I was having a look at something online, I don't know, back end of last year, when I saw that the, uh, the FTDX 101 had picked the 6700 on off of the top slot and had a, a great deal of fantastic features on it. So um, when I saw that, I, I purchased a FTDX 101 and absolutely love it. It is a fantastic radio. Um, gives you all of the benefits of course of an SDR but the traditional um, box knobs and switches with a, a really high resolution display on it as well so smitten with that uh, I'm very pleased indeed but when I saw the FTDX10 come out and that uh, Rob's measured it and it's only just below performance levels of the FTDX101 I was just amazed taken back so for that price point for the sort of 1500 pounds in the UK, as it would be, that's including uh, sales tax in the UK, that is an absolute steal. So that's something to um, to have a play with, uh, have a look at, and, and really seriously think about putting on your shopping list for now or in the future. So that's pretty much it for the update for the moment. Uh, keep an eye out, I'm gonna try and get this on uh, the show for the weekend with Martin. If you've got any more questions to ask for, for Martin, uh, stick them in the comments below or on the um, the earlier um, uh, video that we did. <clears throat> and also, if you still want to enter into the draw, uh, at various different stages on the likes and subscribes, I'm gonna be giving different things away. I've still got this uh, 144 megahertz 9 element LFA, which I'm gonna give away when we get to 2000 subscribers. All I need for you to do is put your call sign um, in the comments box below like this video subscribe to the channel and then you'll be up for that as soon as we hit the uh, the uh, the 2000 um, subscribers mark so what will happen is I'll list them all down we'll have a number corresponding to each and then I'll get somebody uh, somehow independent to pick where that is and I'm gonna ship this thing worldwide I'm getting kind of twitchy with that because uh, some of these locations are getting very, very expensive indeed. If you look at Australia, for instance, we've been having a few guys uh, that have wanted some HF stuff, and it's it's absolutely incredible at the moment. I don't know if they're taking everything out of the box, uh, sanitising it and putting it all back in again, but the shipping costs to Australia right now are around half the cost of an HF antenna. It's just absolutely ludicrous. So I'm hoping that... Um, it's somewhere uh, relatively sensible that we're going to get to send this thing to. So fingers crossed that will happen. Uh, keep an eye out. I'm going to be trying to keep a little bit more regular now. Maybe one video a week, something like that. Uh, and we're going to be covering a few more subjects on certain antennas. So anything that you want to see, anything you want to discuss, uh, any uh, areas you want to cover or questions you've got, let me know and we'll see if we can put them in a video for you. Okay, that's it for now. Uh, thanks again for joining and please do subscribe.